Hello, welcome back to Brenda Sushi Lab Noding. In this episode, I'll be talking about um, this attribute proximity nodes that's available now under Blender 2.93 Alpha. So, this is still quite new and still fresh. So, what's going on here? We have this Taurus Donut object, and then we have this box that's arranged into a grid. And if I move the Taurus around and transform the Taurus, you can see there's some kind of there's something happening okay so the box is changing scale based on the distant approximations of the torus points so i mentioned points because it's not like a it's not like the volume of the donuts it's more like the, the distance to the points so let me show you exactly what's going on in fact, it's not the distance into the points, but it into the face because we can change it into points or edges. So this is uh, this is quite important. So the way I set it up is, and the one that's doing the job is this attribute proximity. So we have the original object, which is the alpha objects, which is a grid. So this is how I arrange uh, the points into a grid. Uh, I'm using the help of uh, Stretch of Nodes because Stretch of Nodes is the one that's generating uh, the grid, the box, and the torus. And the one that's handling the relationship is this geometry nodes. Okay. So, all right. We, and on top of attribute proximity that's controlling the scale, I'm using this attribute color ramp this one is to do the clamping, the camp, uh, the clamping of value. Okay, so, and then at the end we have point instancing um, for the box. If I didn't use attribute color ramp, what we're gonna get is this box like this. So this one might not be. This one might not be clear what's going on, but it's because of it's using the distant proximity to generate the attributes. The further away the box from the points, it's going to be larger, right? Because it's uh, based on the distance uh, proximity. Um, if I'm not wrong, you can, instead of using attribute color ramp, attribute color ramp is the easiest. To clamp the value, the minimum and maximum value, you can also use map range. So you can, I believe you can also do this. And under attribute, you have attribute separate x y z and attribute combine x y z. So this is actually really quite interesting. This is this is how you can kind of clamp the value. So this is geometry, right? Let's say we have uh, this attribute called scale and you want to kind of separate and put it back together. Um, so this one is me separating the scale into S, X, S, Y, and S, Z. And at some point I want to kind of do the attribute mixing currently it's a yeah this one is interesting ideally i want to be able to just get this value and then remap the value so currently this one is slightly complicated so i don't i don't go there instead for this simple example i'm just using this setup the, um, using attribute proximity to find the closest or the furthest away of points into these objects and then using attribute color ramp to clamp to clamp the value so this is basically what's going on so anytime if you want to you, you want to adjust the grid or something you can just use stretch of nodes in this case. So just make it easier. 
and for the for the for the donut for the torus here and if i'm changing the size okay so that's what's going on it's a uh, easier so again alpha beta beta is the box that i'm instancing if i change the box it will totally change the this result and also the the torus in this case this is the one that we can control and we can animate manually if i were to change this guy with a with a with different object like icosphere i can do that now we have this gamma icosphere with points and distance approximations that we can adjust and we can, we can animate this if you want. If I were to use like randomize or noise vector, I can make, I can influence this guy a little bit. So let's get our color ramp a little bit more. So I could, yeah, I could animate this. In fact, if you if you want, if you really want, you don't need to use icosphere. I believe you you can just use random uh, random vector. So if I make like random vector like this and just plug this in like that, we have a bunch of points here that can influence. The approximations. Oh, okay. So it still requires some kind of edges. That's interesting. Hmm. Point edges. Okay, let's do some kind of quick edges making UV connection. I just generate a point and edges. Let's see if this is working. It's okay still, so it doesn't like my objects. Okay, so this I need to reconnect the object. That's why. Okay, this this makes more sense now. Okay, points. So sorry about that. It's a it was a, a glitch. In my brand and then okay let's go back so basically we have a bunch of points here okay so we have a bunch of points and we have a bunch of we have a grid of boxes and we can now have some kind of system here where the points is random is an in a space so if, if I change this plane into vector P field which is like the grid of vector you will see there's some kind of connections here there it's uh, becoming clearer now that I scatter points that's more like a volume you can see the relationship uh, between the grid of boxes and the, the one inside it that's we, we don't see too much we will see like a sphere and you can see this is still working so we have a volume of points that's approximating the distance into each points of the box grid and we are controlling it as a volume so geometry nodes is 
really powerful also at this point because with these points with geometry nodes if you want you can turn these points into a volume and then volume back into the mass you can do that but that's probably for the next episode um, yeah that's probably for the next episode but if you if you really want to do it there is this uh, point to volume and there is a volume to mesh so we can turn the points into volume and into the mesh so what's missing with the attribute approximations is that it's a uh, we have attribute proximity into points edges and faces but we don't have volume so maybe at some points we can scatter points from a volume but for now you know we have this stretch of things going on so we have a bunch of points that's being turned into a volume and volume into the mesh and on top of that we have uh, let's see we can adjust the density as well apparently so I want to talk this about this more in the next episode because it's slightly tricky but yeah for now we have this kind of system We're already pretty powerful geometry attribute proximity the color ram that controlling the clamping of value and then the point instancings of course instancing the beta objects that's currently is just a box you can always adjust this box but you can also replace it with any objects like Suzanne and it's really fast and it's still reacting to our gamma object which is now this clump of points okay so there you go that's a quick look at the new attribute nodes uh, attribute proximity nodes with geometry nodes hopefully you find this interesting let me know what you think and i'll see you next time thank you bye